My name is Captain Ken Nettleton. I'm your master of ceremonies for this afternoon's concert. And on behalf of Colonel Chris Hunt, commander of 41 Canadian Brigade Group, and Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Beauchamp, I am pleased to welcome you to the 100th anniversary concert of the regimental pipes and drums of the Calgary Highlanders. As we begin, we want to uh, acknowledge respectfully that today's event is located at the confluence of the Bow and the Elbow Rivers in a place called Mohintis, a Blackfoot word meaning elbow. It is in the spirit of truth, respect, and reciprocity that we honor and acknowledge Mohintis and recognize the traditional territories and oral practices of the Blackfoot Confederacy, including the Sasika, Pakani, and Kanaya nations, the Stony Nakoda, including the Chiniki, Bearspaw, and Wesley Nations, and the Sutsina Nation. Southern Alberta is also home to the Métis Nation of Alberta, region number three. The Calgary Highlanders is Calgary's infantry regiment. We are members of the Calgary community, and we began in 1910 as a 103rd regiment, known as the Calgary Rifles and then as the 10th Battalion from 1914 and from 1921 onward as the Calgary Highlanders. The pipes and drums have been part of Calgary since 1922. We are proud to present the Canadian Army and the Calgary Highlanders and to continue a journey that started 100 years ago. Today we are delighted to be joined by the band of the King's Own Calgary Regiment. The band appears primarily as a concert and parade band and provides music for military, veterans, and state functions, as well as for public performances. The band has players of various ages and skill levels from recent high school to university players, hobby players, semi-professional and professional musicians. Members of both the Pipes and Drums and the band of the King's Own Calgary Regiment are either Army Reservists or civilian volunteers, all of whom practice and perform in addition to their full-time occupations. Our volunteers are generally retired military or interested civilians who donate their time and skills for the opportunity to perform with a high-quality band in a variety of settings. The band of the King's Own Calgary Regiment is always looking for talented musicians who may be interested in joining. The Calgary Highlanders also welcome motivated people who are interested in serving as soldiers or musicians on a part-time basis. We offer comprehensive training, the opportunity to serve Canada both home and abroad, and the opportunity for personal growth. The band of the King's Own Calvary Regiment is also assisted by members of the Royal Canadian Artillery Band from Edmonton. Formed in 1899, the Royal Canadian Artillery Band is the oldest professional military band in Canada. With 30 full-time musicians, the band performs as a military parade band, wind ensemble, and in small groups that include the jazz, funk, Dixieland, brass, and woodwind ensembles. The Royal Canadian Artillery Band provides music for concerts, parades, and formal ceremonies representing Canada around the world. Will you please rise with me now, remove your hats and caps, and join us in our national anthem. Audience members in uniform, please salute, if not in a formed group.
Similar to the present time, early Calgarians were from many different countries. In 1906, the Calgary Scottish Pipe Band was formed by musicians from the Scottish community, of course. The Calgary Scottish performed at dances, concerts, community events, and was successful in local competitions. With many band members joining the army, activity tailed off midway through World War I. The Calgary Scottish was revived in mid-1919, resuming public appearances and fundraising for uniforms and for equipment. The newly formed Calgary Highlanders began canvassing for pipers and drummers in January of 1922. In July of that year, the Calgary Scottish folded, and most of the members formed the Calgary Highlanders Pipe Band. We don't know exactly how this happened, but the president of the Calgary Scottish was commissioned into the Calgary Highlanders. Their earliest documented performance was a concert at St. George's Island on August 6, 1922, and we are marking our 100th anniversary from that performance. Now about the bagpipes. The bagpipe is an ancient instrument used in many forms in different cultures, and the Highland bagpipe was traditionally a solo instrument. It wasn't until the 1850s that pipe bands actually began to appear. The classic music for the Highland bagpipes is known as a pibroch. Pibrochs may be up to 15 minutes in duration and can be difficult for the casual listener to appreciate. Modern audiences are more familiar with marches, sprass bays, reels, hornpipes, and jigs. These types of music have been adapted to piping over the past 200 years. The pipes and drums will now perform a medley of tunes. The medley begins with a march and branches into other tunes. Listen closely and see if you can hear the different types of tunes being played.
Now for Highland Dancing. Highland Dancing showcases Scotland's rich cultural roots. The dances were originally less regulated and more open to personal interpretation. But modern dances have evolved into a highly stylized form suited for competition. In former times, Highland dancers were exclusively male. As you will see shortly, dancing requires agility, strength, and stamina, skills that were also important to hunter and warrior cultures. The gender ceiling in Highland dancing was broken in the late 1800s, and today the overwhelming majority of Highland dancers are female. There are three official Highland dances, the sword dance, the Highland fling, and the Shane Truba, meaning uh, actually it's called Sean Trewus, sorry, but that my Scottish is not great, my Gaelic. Along with other competitive dances, such as the Sailor's Hornpipe. Our dancers will perform the Highland Fling, and the roots of this dance are not well understood. However, one legend has it that the dance was performed on a targ, a shield with a spike in the middle, so the dancer had to be strong and agile to avoid the spike. Another legend is that the dance imitates a stag rearing in the wilderness, the arms raised representing the antlers. We will probably never know the real answer, but as you watch the performance, I invite you to decide for yourself, or perhaps you might see something new in the dance and start a new legend. One of the crowd pleasers in Highland Games is band competitions. Some bands exist solely to compete and win competitions, while others, including our pipes and drums, see competition as a, as a way to maintain their high musical standards. Given our busy schedule, we compete as an on as an as on available basis. The medley performed earlier is one aspect of competitive music. A medley permits a high degree of latitude in musical content and artistic impression. The second type of competitive music has a standardized form. Bands can choose the music, but the format must be followed. The pipes and drums will now play a march set, a collection of three tunes, and they will be competing with this set at the Canmore Highland Games over this coming Labor Day weekend.